And oh, look who's here. Oh, I do believe that's... Alia? Oh. Why are you two here? I could ask you the same thing. thing. It's, it's dangerous, dangerous here. There's a vampire living in this castle, you know. Anton, he's no vampire. He's just... I'm quite puzzled, Katia. What do you know about this man? Um... It's not for me to say. Besides, right now, you Fuck must him. focus all your efforts on escaping. If you linger here, the madness will grip you before long. Madness? I'm afraid I don't understand. Please be honest with us. What's happening I'll here? I'll punch her in the face because I'm already getting annoyed by Katia. <laughs> I'm already getting annoyed by Katia. Very well. I'll explain everything. But first, you must get as far you must get as far from this castle as possible, quickly. And this is where the and this is where the, uh, the rest of the game is just all voice acting. Thank you. How are you related to this entire situation? Are you? There's no time. You've got to get out of here. This won't do. People are trying to sleep, you know. Is it you? It can't be. Oh, how I've waited. It's been so unbearably long. Professor, do you know what he's talking about? Not in the slightest. Come closer. My dear sweet Sophia, I've missed you so. <laughs> What's this? So yeah, here comes that uh, badass scene that uh, Professor Layton in the chat uh, mentioned er earlier. Is this how it is? I didn't see this coming, Layton. Not at all. I'm not sure I understand. This is your fault, but you can't have my Sophia. You're going to be very sorry you crossed me. <gasps> <laughs> There's no lack of swords here. Take whichever one you like. Know this, though. Only one of them is real. A true warrior always keeps his blade in hand. <gasps> one true sword. It's the one in his hand. The one oh, God. Uh, 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 I gotta hurry. Oh, I gotta hurry. Keeps his blade in hand. These, these are Anton's last words to Professor Lane before the start of their duel. Can you find a real sword among Anton's selection collection? Uh 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 uh. Yep, yep, uh, it's this one. Because yep, he said a two word. Yeah, because none of them are real. And it's yep, and it's the one with the knight. Consider this puzzle solved. All right, we only got, like, one more yeah. we got one more. We got one more puzzle. Kind of left. Like I was panicking like crazy. Uh, just, uh, 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 oh no, don't worry. Uh, uh, just to... be quiet and listen. <laughs> uh, actually, I was gonna say like you know, um, if you were to get it wrong, like it's not like you get a bad ending or anything. It's just more like try again. Yep. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, get ready for a badass action scene. Quiet. <laughs> I didn't think you had it in you, Mr. Layton. I love this music too. It took me a while to understand, but this is actually the, uh, the they're actually remixing a uh, latent theme here. Did you 
you say? I don't understand. Sophia, dear. You haven't figured it out, have you? You really don't know. Then I guess it's up to me to tell you the truth. Uh, yep, here's the twist ending. I'm your granddaughter, Anton. Don't be ridiculous. Look at me. I'm too young to be anyone's grandfather. But what you see around you isn't real. It's just an illusion created by your own mind. Your youth is part of that illusion. The truth is, well... Allow me, please. The gold mine built by your father, the late Duke Herzog, brought this town much growth and prosperity. But something terrible slept deep within that rich gold deposit. Yeah, remember that smoke from earlier? Unbeknownst to the miners, they hit a vein of hallucinogenic gas while digging for gold. The gas made those who breathed it extremely susceptible to mental suggestion of all types. Tales of the nightmarish vision seen in full sense then spread, as did the town's sinister reputation. In truth, neither the full sense we see before us nor its residents really exist. So you see, Luke, the real reason that none of this ever existed is because we just all got high. This is all a creation of our minds. How did you figure it all out, Professor? The images of full sense we saw are 50 years old. Yet they show a town identical to the full sense of today. No town can remain unchanged for 50 long years. The photos we saw in the train station formed our impression of the full sense we'd seen. The full sense of 50 years ago. Enough of this madness. False sense is real. I'm real. None of it's real, Grandfather. This town is just a thin shadow. Born of greed. You and Sophia, everything you know changed 50 years ago. So, yeah. Katia is the granddaughter of Sophia and Anton. Katia set out for false sense to make sure that Anton understood Sophia's true feelings and reasons for leaving. And false sense station. The hallucinogenic gas presented in Folsen's air caused Layden and the others to imagine the station as was in many photographs, lighting the corner lead lighting the corner leading corridor. Out, corridor leading out of the building. Alright, so do we wanna talk about this twist ending right now or save it when we get to the credits? Credits. Alright. Yeah, the credits. Alright, all right. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um I'll say right now, uh because I'm not gonna go too deep into it right now. Uh but when I first played this game, I thought the twist ending was uh, pretty creative and clever. Uh, but after seeing other people playing through it and talking about it, um, and even thinking about it as uh, long and hard, I do think, like, it's one of those uh, twist endings where I like it for the idea, but I think it was kind of executed a little poorly. But I'll, I'll get into more in that. Uh, uh, I'll get more into that is why I feel that way. And I'll even get more into uh, Sophia, too, because believe it or not, when I first played this game and um, I, I found out a little bit about Sophia, I was a little bit mad at her. Um, but not, not, uh, not like stupid mad where I just like, you know, she's the worst character ever or anything like that. Uh, but I'm just more a little bit mad of her and how she handled the situation and such, which again, uh, we'll, we'll explain more when we get to the end credits. And again, after thinking more about it, I don't hate her as a character cause, cause again, if I was in uh, her shoes, I don't think I would handle the situation better myself. But at the same time, you know, like I do understand other people's criticism when it comes to like, you know, Sophia and such. But you and I are betrothed. How can you just leave me here? I won't have it. This whole town is cursed. If we remain here, all those dear to me will die. Am I not dear to you, Sophia? Stay with me, and we'll rebuild full sense together. I'm sorry, Anton. But there's someone else I love who needs me even more than you. Is that the real reason you want to go? Because there's someone else. Are you fucking serious? Uh, no, just, fucking just, 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 no, no, just, um, uh, just continue, uh, just, yeah, just listen a little more. You got it all wrong, Grandfather. She never betrayed you. What? The other she was talking about was the little life growing inside her. The life two created together. No. That can't be. I'm sorry, Anton. But there's 
someone else I love who needs me even more than you. I never knew Sophia was... That's right. Grandmother was carrying my mother, and she left Volsens to keep her safe. She kept the baby a secret to avoid causing you more pain. She kept the baby a secret to avoid causing you more pain, but she still kind of caused you pain because because she kind of left you thought that, you know, she was having an affair with you, and basically, you know, you, you just basically turned into a cranky old man, and all this started because of... Well, actually, it both started because of, like, you know, the gas itself. Not really Sophia herself, but but at the same time, you know, she kind of was... Uh, her plan kind of backfired a little bit, though. I've been so wrong. Grandmother passed away last year. But she was always talking about you, even toward the end. So, so yeah, right here, like I said, this part right here, just why I'm not really mad at Sophia, because, like I said, if I was in her situation, I don't think I would handle it a lot better. Um, I probably would have handled it a lot worse, to be honest. So, and, and again, it's clear that, like, you know, um, once we get to the NN and such, she still really loves Anton with all her heart and everything. She just had to make a really tough choice and such, because don't forget, uh, Anton is the Duke and such, so even if he wanted to, he couldn't really, you know... Uh, leave the town. He did have to stay and govern it, uh, govern it and everything. So it was a tough choice for her. Like you know, does she want to stay and risk the baby dying, or does she want to you know leave Anton and have the baby live a healthy, normal life and such? She never stopped loving you. But yeah. Anton invented the whole vampire scheme: scare off those who would try to loot the Hirsch and fortune. He did this by whisking away all those who came too close to the castle and sending them free to run away once properly scared. Sophia is dead? No, it can't be. I've had enough of your lies! Oh. No. Leave now. The whole place is starting to crumble. Come with me. What's this? What's happening? What? <sighs> Come on, Grandfather. We have to get out of here. Be careful. <sighs> I wish that could have been low. You wish, uh, you, wish, uh, you wish Luke would have been the one to save her. No, 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 no. Like the, like the wall, the, the, the roof would have fallen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like uh, I, I, I know. I can just imagine it being like, okay, Luke, you go save her. Wait, Professor Squish. Ah, uh, finally, let's get out of here. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna have to report to his father what happened, but yeah. And, and yeah, and yeah, this is yeah, this is what Folsom this is what Folsom looked like the entire time. A very dead town. And yeah, this is what Anton looked like the whole time as well. I really do love the music in this game. The music in this game is really, really awesome. It really does set up the it sets up the emotions and the uh, mood perfectly. Searching for. Here, allow me to return this to you. Thank you. So the box wasn't cursed after all. No, Luke. There's no curse to be found here. But if I were to guess, I suspect you'd find traces of that gas in the ore used to make this box. The you mean to tell me that I wasted what two months? To find out that the bots is not cursed. I mean, uh, I, I mean, technically it's not cursed, but as you said, I like you know, uh, the uh, the wood uh, the wood slash ore they used to make the box it had a bit of the gas in it. So basically, as they said, you know, the uh, uh, basically you know whoever were to uh, open the box, yeah, yeah, those who open the box expected death, and uh, once they uh, read the gas, they basically did somewhat die. So it, it it is still pretty dark. So. 
So I think we could kind of assume that someone kind of committed suicide because they thought the box was going to kill them. When when in reality they ah. killed but yeah, when in reality they killed themselves. So that's oh. pretty dark for for an E-rated game. I suppose mm. it was just an ordinary box then. Oh, I assure you it's far from ordinary. This box was But about 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 uh, about, uh, about the way, I like how Layton is just I like how Layton is just like, well, it's just like, it's just like, it's just like, what? It's just like, well, I challenge you to a duel. I, I, I pretty much destroyed your entire castle. The whole town is basically dead. I just basically, you know, uh, made you live off the streets for the rest of your life. So here, have this box back. What do you mean? The box contains a hidden message, one meant only for Sophia. Many years ago. I asked a traveler passing through town to deliver it to her. Unfortunately, the box's value made it a target for those hungry for wealth. And so it was stolen again and again, thus perpetuating the whole chain of sad events. But we checked the box. It was as empty as could be. Ah, well that's because there's actually a second way to open it. The sun rises when you and I meet, and when the wind blows, you will know my heart. These old words are the key to understanding this box and what it means. Do you follow, boy? I think so. <laughs> Let me give it a shot. The sun rises when you and I meet, and when the wind blows, you will know my heart. Alright, here we are. The last puzzle of this game. And this one's actually interesting because uh, you actually do need a DS microphone for this. Uh, just like how it was in the original game. So, we're playing it on the emulator, so we're going to see if this microphone works. But if not, we do actually have a key for the uh, uh, that's used for the DS microphone. So, oh, no. so basically for this one, uh, when the sun rises, you and I will meet. And when the wind blows, you will know my heart. So basically, you just gotta basically make the box, um, uh, just ba yeah, just basically make the box as it is in the description. So the sun rises when you and I meet. So basically, make the boy and the girl face each other, and then put the sun up, and then you have to blow into the microphone. So let's see if this works. Nope, doesn't. All right, oh, well. just pretend I blow. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Piece of cake. Alrighty, alright, so let's see what was the message that Anton left for for Sophia all those years ago. I did it. Oh. What's the matter? This isn't the letter I wrote. This is Sophia's handwriting. The box must have made it to her after all. My dear Anton, are you well? I received your letter. Though I'd like nothing more than to see you again, I'm afraid I no longer have the strength to do so. You don't know how many times I've thought about you over the years. I often wonder if you hate me for what I did. Do you? When I decided to leave, I was carrying our child. I couldn't bear exposing that tiny life to such danger. I knew your father's position and understood you didn't have the option to leave with me. Even though I did the only thing I could, I'll always regret leaving you that way. But there's one bright spot in this sad story, and that is our lovely granddaughter, Katya. My departure all those years ago has given you the chance to meet. Katya's mother died shortly after she was born. But Katya grew up strong and sweet just the same. She reminds me of you every time she smiles. With her around, 
I could never forget about you, even if I wanted to. Ouch. You've been in my thoughts since the day we parted. And now, though my time here is drawing to a close, I like to think we'll meet again on the other side. The thought of seeing your face warms me. my mm -hmm. heart. Be well and be happy, my dear Anton. Goodbye. But just for now, you're Sophia. Yeah, this is what I mean. We're like. This game definitely does have a bittersweet ending and such. And like I said, um, I, I yeah. actually have seen some people almost crying um, on this scene, and I don't blame them and such. Um, I didn't I didn't cry myself, but I will admit I was very touched too uh, when, uh, when I first heard this. It's really, I almost I almost lost it right here. I, I know. Now. Uh, like, and like I said, this is the reason why, like, uh, I'll, get more, I'll get more than this when we get to the end of the credits. But this is why, like, I decided, okay, you know what? I do understand your reason why you had to leave him. I do think it could have been... I do think you kind of could have communicated with him a little bit better. But at the same time, I can't hate you for it, so... So, yeah. It turns out that the Elysian box was crafted 50 years ago, carrying a letter from Anton to his love, Sophia. A gas present in the, in the middle world used to make the box cause illusion, hallucinations in those who open it. The visions, uh, the visions are how the rumors of a curse began. So yeah, I, I think the real reason why most people almost cried at this because I think we've all I think we've all you know uh, been there where we you know tragically lost a love life and everything too and you know it's been a long while you know however long you ever seen a relative can sometimes you know do a lot for you when you find out they're finally gone. Can I tell you a secret? Oh, never mind. Not. Uh, go go ahead. You can tell me after this. Grandfather. Yes, that's right. It has a nice ring to it. I am so happy we met my dear granddaughter. You don't know how much this means to me. Why are they granddaughter? I thought she and her. Uh, his no, wife. no, she, no, she's the granddaughter of um, of Anton and Sophia. The uh, the baby that uh, Sophia Carey was uh, uh, Katia's mother. Uh, yeah. And sadly, uh, Katya's mother passed away when she was just young. So she only had uh, her father and uh, her granddaughter to take care of her. See, I get confused. That's all right. All right. Are you listening, Sophia? I'll have to put off returning to your side for I will say this, though. Uh, if you uh, if you toy, uh, if you and Toy Barney almost break down... Um, Crying for this scene. Just wait till we get to the ending of Unwound Future, because oh boy, that's the real teal jerker right there. Wherever she is, I'm sure she's very happy for us. <laughs> and again, this music. This music is just so good. All right, uh, go, uh, go ahead, Toy Barney. Uh, uh, what were you gonna say? Um, this might be like a like a. This might be like a. Nah, I'll say it later. I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say it. Uh -huh. That's why I'm saying it. Should right. be on stream. Okay. Well, go, okay. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go, uh, go, go ahead and tell me when stream's over. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. All right. But yeah. But uh, but like I said, even though there are some problems, <laughs> but even though there are some problems with a uh, diabolical box, I will admit the ending is really good, really bittersweet too. Heartbreaking. For yeah. The ones that lost the, for the ones that lost a loved one. Yeah, definitely. And, and like and like I said, once we get to Unwound Future, I think I think it's gonna be hard for both you and Justice. Probably might even be hard for me to try not to cry at that ending. The fatal curse it was said to carry. But when all was said and done, there was no curse sleeping under its gilded lid. Instead, the box was revealed for what it truly was: a vessel created to carry the love of two kindred spirits through all of time. While terror brought the box its notoriety. In the end, its most powerful message was one of love. And that was Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. We finally finished the game. Uh, there's going to be an ending cutscene um, after these uh, credits, but if, you got, uh, but if you want to give our thoughts right now during these credits, we can. So uh, I only like the train. <laughs> you only like the train? Is there, uh, is there anything else that uh, you want to say or anything? 
I hate sliders. <laughs> uh, well, well, actually, what did you think on this game? Was it better, or like, uh, did you like the first game a little I more? I liked the first one better, but I liked the train on this one. Alrighty. Alright, uh, alright, uh, uh, alright. Well, uh, who wants to go next and give me their thoughts? I'll go. I'll go. Alright. Alright. Um, in terms of in terms of what game I like best, I admit, I, I'm, I admit I like both. Yeah. They're both the same thing to me. You're like, I, and, I, I, okay. Uh, I got I have a few couple scenes that I like. I like the scene where, uh, what was what was Sammy's uh, uncle? I forgot his. Uh, I forgot his name. Beluga, yeah. Yeah. I like the scene where, where Beluga screamed at at Kermit the Frog, and Kermit just took the insults, but then he got the trick of it. <laughs> that was a hilarious moment for me. All right. Uh, what's your second? Uh, what's your What's your other favorite scene? The ending. The ending. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Like I said, you know, the uh, the professional lanes are are known for having uh, tear triggers and heartwarming endings and such. And and, and I mean, while uh, while the last game, like you know, uh, while the last game didn't brought me to like any tears and such. Um, uh, the last game and its ending was still really sweet and such that you couldn't help but smile. Uh, this game, though, like, you know, the ending was really bittersweet and, you know, you feel sorry for both, like, you know, Anton and even Sophia with, like, you know, everything they had to do and such because of the situation given around them. And knowing that, you know, Sophia's dead, you know, again, anyone that's been in, you know, Anton's shoes can, you know, understand his, you know, anger as well as his uh, sadness. And... And like, and like I said, they did a really good job, you know, uh, portraying the scene, especially with the music. The music really helped, you know, capture that emotion scene so well. Yeah. Alrighty. But, uh, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say uh, other than the, the hamster minigame and the and the cop and the team minigame are elephant shit. <laughs> Well, is, there, uh, is there anything in this game that you consider was a little weak than the first game or just weak overall? Um, no, not really. I, I find it the same level as the original game, Alrighty. as the first game. Alrighty. Uh, what you, uh, what, uh, what, uh, uh, what did you think? Uh, what is your thoughts on the uh, soundtrack for this game? Oh, absolutely loved it. You love them? Absolutely, like, yeah, I loved it. And that's a rarity. When I say that, that's a fucking rarity. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean the soundtrack is good. I mean, again, listening to you know, uh, fun fact on the uh, credits. So uh, this credit song, um, if you were playing in the original Japanese version, uh, 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 you would uh, you would actually hear some singing in the uh, end credits and such. Uh, but because you know uh, they don't want to bother with translation and such, they just decided to you know uh, give you the instrument version instead. But uh, but the instrument version of this one is still real good. This is one. Of, uh, this and the ending to. Uh, Unwound Future is my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite credits uh, theme of all time. This, this reminds me of the Island song, believe it or not. This like the instrumentation. Uh, 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 I can see that. I, 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 I can definitely see something like that. Alrighty then. Uh, is that uh, is that all you want to say about for uh, Diabolical Box? Nah, I just want to give him my score before the cuts. Um. Alright, go right ahead. Uh, after after a while. I prefer Ace Attorney more than, than Professor Layden, but I can't deny that these games are good, so I will give it a 7 out of 10. Alrighty. Well, I, all right. and uh, like I said, um, if you uh, if you almost cry during the uh, ending for this game, be uh, be prepared when we get to Unwound Future, because like I said, that ending, oh boy, it, it, is it, it, is really, it is really a sad ending. I will say that. But, alrighty, so, alright, so my thoughts on Professor Layden and the Diabolical Box. So when I first uh, played this game, um, when I first played this game for the first time, uh, I had uh, th uh, there were some interesting parts in this game that did make me uh, that did make me interested and want to keep going. One thing I will give this game a credit for is that, like you know, uh, unlike with uh, unlike with uh, uh, the last game, uh, uh, the last uh, the last game story was a little bit um, simple and stuff. So, like you already knew like uh, what your goal was, uh, what you needed to do, and everything, and uh, basically you know. Where did you need to go? The thing that did, uh, the thing that, uh, the thing that the last story did to keep your interest was basically the mystery surrounding the town and such. Um, and here, uh, the game, uh, the game already grabs your interest right off the bat with like, you know, uh, with like, you know, the mystery on the Elysian box and wondering, you know, is it really cursed? Like, you know, did Doctor Schrader actually really die from the Elysian box, or like, um, or like, did something else happen? You know, uh, with that box to begin with and such. And you're already interested in learning, like, you know. 
the secrets of the town with like, you know, stuff like Dropstone, the uh, tunnel, the uh, false sense and such. I will say the town of false sense is really good and such. I really do like how they add the mysteries to uh, uh, the false sense and such. They give you just enough clues from like, you know, from like uh, both the town itself and the people around the town when you talk to them. Especially, uh, especially after, you know, you're done solving the puzzles, they give you, like, you know, little hints and saying, like, you know. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, well, real quick. Huh? He's alive! So, the doctor's alive after all! Hmm. We'll visit him as soon as we return. Hmm. Oh, but that might conflict with the symposium you have scheduled in London tomorrow. Well then, I'll simply have to cancel. Huh? After all, though, one must always show gratitude to one's teachers. That's what a gentleman does. <laughs> but yeah, alright, so going back to what I was saying. Uh, the town of False Sense, again, like, you know, um, you really get a sense that, like, you know, this town is... Something's really strange with this town with how the people are talking about it. And again, you want to find out more about the town itself and, like, you know, what's actually going on and such, or, like, you know... Uh, what's, uh, yeah, there's basically, like, what's going on and everything with it. The set, uh, like I said, the setting and definitely the story, uh, there are some parts of it where it's definitely a huge upgrade from the last game. And the music, again, the music really helps with this game. It really sets, um, uh, it really gives you a nice set of, uh, different emotions and mood throughout the game. Like, like, uh, like, basically, right off the bat, you already know something is up with this Elysian box, and already you're feeling kind of, you know, unnervous and settling, like, you know, the more you hear about the box. And, uh, uh, but they, but they also give you, you know, happy, uh, uh, happy, catchy tunes with something like, you know, the train as, uh, drop stone, uh, drop stone itself and everything. And then once you get to full sense, again, you get, you get a shit, you get a stand, a chance that, you know, uh, full sense is one of those towns where it's like, on the inside, it seems like a nice, normal town. But again, there's something about it. And the music, again, accompanies that, you know, this town, uh, this town is something, you know, up and such. Something's really up and wrong with uh, this town that, you know, you want uh, you want to know, like, you know, what else is uh, going on with this town and everything. So, I, so I think this game does a really good job on, like, you know, uh, building suspense and you wanting to figure out, you know, just what's going on and everything throughout the game. And again, like I said, the music is really good. Probably one of my favorite latent soundtracks um, in the entire game, next to the uh, next game that we'll be doing later, Unwound Future. Alright, so, now for stuff that I uh, didn't like about this game. Alright, so there is one thing about this game obviously, that... Obviously, obviously the first thing you're going to say is a, is a team mini game. No one li who Honestly, who likes that bullshit? Nobody. <laughs> well, okay, uh, okay, if we're going on that part, I guess I'll talk about the mini games and the puzzles themselves. Uh, the puzzles were a lot more better in this game, too. Um, uh, from what I understand, the people uh, were complaining that, you know, the puzzles in the first game didn't seem like, you know... They added to the story or the setting too much, so the team made sure that, you know, for each puzzle, that they make sure that each puzzle has somewhat connected with the story. And they did a good job. They did a good job on, like, you know, uh, making you feel like the puzzles are belonging uh, with each story. And it did a good job on you feeling like, you know, you solved the mystery with Layton and Luke, um, along, uh, along with the story and everything. Uh, turns on the mini games. The mini games were a lot more better um, in the first game. They weren't just like you know collectathons anymore. They they actually did felt like mini games. Now yes, the team mini game is still bullshit. <laughs> uh, I still uh, again and again it's just more because it was it's just more because it's just so random and such and everything that really you know kills it for me and everything. Again uh, again if it wasn't so random and such and it was and it was actually on a set pattern, I probably would have classified it as like okay or something like that. Uh, hamster mini game is not too bad. Like you know, uh, at least with a hamster mini game, you know, you do have a set goal in mind. It's just basically a matter of time of you, you know, uh, figuring out which uh, which pieces to put down and which pieces, you know, will uh, basically uh, make the hamster, you know, uh, get uh, get to the max amount of steps that you need. And by the way, if you saw the end credits, uh, if you just saw the end credits, yeah, basically, yeah, the hamster mini game that was all for Doc because he went back to being a fat ass anyway. So, so, so technically, yeah. that was a waste of time. Indeed it was. But yeah, uh, the camera mini game. Uh, the camera mini game is actually one of my favorites um, in this game and such. I do like uh, the. Spoilers. Oh yes, that, oh, oh yes, that one. That one was very good. Yeah, I mean that, that one was real. Uh, that one was really fun in terms of the spot, the difference. And I actually like. Um, and I actually like how it was used to basically, you know, look for hidden puzzles and such. That was actually a really clever way that they did that. So, so, uh, so yeah, the camera mini game is definitely up there. One of my favorite uh, mini games in the uh, series so far. 
Uh, but aside of that, alright, so the other thing I didn't like, so let's talk about the twist ending a little bit. The uh, whole uh, hallucination uh, gas, or whatever it's supposed to be called. So, like I said, when I first played this and such, um, I thought the twist was actually really clever and such. Um, I thought it was, you know, uh, I thought it was something uh, unique and everything. But after thinking about it a long time and watching other people doing less plays of it, um, the twist is one of those where it's like, it's, it's not, it's, it sounds good on paper and such, but when you get down to it and when it's, uh, in a way it's executed, it's done a little poorly. And basically what I mean by that is just like, you know, so like, uh, so like as some people pointed out, you know, if this is supposed to be like an hallucination and such, then how are we able to, you know, talk to everyone in town or how is Layden able to, uh, or I mean like, okay, that part is not too difficult to understand because, you know, Layton is pretty smart, so I guess it wouldn't be, it wouldn't take too long for Layton to figure out that, you know, uh, that, uh, that this town is not right. But basically the whole idea of like, you know, uh, how would we be able to solve, you know, anyone's puzzles and such if, if you know, they were all fake and such. And, pl and plus too, who's to say that all the people that we met, like, you know, like Chamley, Don Paolo, Barton, and all those other people, who's to say they weren't, they weren't part of our hallucination as well? Were they real? Were they part of our hallucinations? But, and plus too, and, and again, this is, go uh, this is uh, more of a joke too, but, um, uh, 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 but since they were all fake, were we just giving tea to just basically no one in general? Was that whole team minigame worthless as well, too? Because we were just basically giving it to no one. And we were just basically dumping it on the ground. And Lane was just, Lane was just like, here, imaginary person. Have this cup of tea. He pours it down on the ground. And we're just spilling tea all over the place. That's just... Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's just... But yeah, that, yeah, that one is really a little bit, um... A little bit weird. Again, uh, again, it's not the worst uh, twist ending. Again, uh... Uh, Idea-wise, you know, it sounds good and such, but I will admit it was kind of poorly executed and such. Uh, but uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, but at the same time, I can't give him too much slack because again, because uh, again, I'm not sure how I would have done it if like you know if I want to try to convince that you know the town is fake and such. So I'm guessing you know the whole gas thing probably was the only way for them um, to go in order for everything to make sense. So I'm not gonna be too harsh with them on that and everything. Uh, another thing I did had a problem with when I first played this game, and, uh, and basically this is a problem that a lot of people have when they play this game, was Sophia herself, and basically her just, you know, uh, basically really just miscommunication between her and Anton. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, now, uh, now like I said, um, I'm, not, I'm not really fully mad at her or anything, like, you know, because like I said, when I first played this game, at first, uh, much like Toy Barney, I was actually a little bit mad. And such, because I actually thought that, like, you know, she really did, like, a poor job on, like, you know, trying to make sure he didn't feel any pain. So, to make sure he didn't feel any pain, he kind of, she kind of, you know, was a little bit, you know, cryptic on, like, you know, uh, why uh, why she was leaving him and such. I think what they probably should have done, uh, and again, like I said, uh, I would have handled, I probably would have handled it a lot worse. But I think what I probably would have uh, done, or at least what she should have done, she should have said something like, you know, uh, she, she should have just come out with the truth and just be like, and just be like, Anton, I'm leaving this place because, you know, we, we have a baby and such. And if I put, and if I leave the baby here, then, you know, it's mo most likely it's going to die. And, and then, and then it cut, they probably could have ironed on two things. Um, again, I don't know how royalty works and such, so I don't know if this would be possible. But if it would be possible, I think it would have been possible if, if she and Anton, you know, somehow were to able to, you know, leave together and then, you know, govern full, and then, uh, govern Dropstone together. It, was, it either would have been that, or she probably, or she probably should have, you know, uh, found a way for, you know, uh, Anton to come and visit Dropstone whenever he wants, just to see, you know, uh, just to see basically Katia's mother and such. I, I think, I think they probably should have done that to begin with. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So, uh, but anyway, uh, another thing I also do have with, because uh, I think you guys also noticed this too, um, during this game, um. If you guys are going for a hundred percent with this game, the story structure in here it really does drag out sometimes uh, during this game. And, ba uh, and basically, oh yeah, one thing I forgot. One thing I forgot to mention was the uh, professor and Luke decide to do something that was fucking annoying. Yeah, uh, that that was that was that was also annoying too. Uh, but the other annoying thing too was just basically in how and how much the uh, story drags. Again, if you're going for a hundred percent. I will admit the story structured is not the best in this game because sometimes you know, because uh, sometimes you know we don't really get a we don't really get a lot of you know, uh, and this is the one thing that the first game did well. Uh, the first the first game did really well on like you know 
uh, having you uh, having you in this uh, uh, basically uh, giving you enough time to explore around Saint Mystier to the point where basically you know you remember every character in Saint Mystier and what their um, personalities or what their quirks were and such. And at every time you know you visit a new part of Saint Mystier, you feel like you know uh, you feel like the story was getting closer and closer to the end. Now, here in this game though, it's sometimes a little hard to tell on like you. Know, Unlike, you know, when the game was coming to an end or when the game, you know, was going to get kept going. Because, again, we spent a short time on the train. And we also spent a short time on uh, Dropstone. And we don't... Yeah. And, and, uh, 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 and, then, and then in full sense, like, you know, you don't you don't spend too much time in full sense either. And that's also true if you're not, going for, a, uh, not going for 100%. If you're not going for a hundred percent, then yeah, uh, then yeah, full sense, you know, uh, at least in terms of the setting itself is memorable. But in terms of the characters that live in full sense, they really are kind of forgettable in almost um, every sense of the word, except except for the ones that are important to the story. Uh, but even the, but even to the ones that are important to the story, um, it's a little hard to remember them when you don't really have that much time to interact with them and such. You kind of just forget about them as soon as like you know, as soon as you're ready to move on to the next. As soon as you're ready to move on to the next chapter or the next setting and such. I think that really what drags this um, game down as well too. Because again, uh, the game does drag a little bit for 100%. And, and sometimes it, it can feel really draining. At Just a uh, word of warning for the for the ones that want to try out this game. Uh, go for the first game that we that we, that we we live stream. Because this one will leave you so burnt down that you really don't want to play another late game. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, definitely. Uh, actually, yes, definitely uh, do at least play the first game first because, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, do, uh, do play the first game first because, you know, uh, the first game does have some elements that will carry on to the second game, mostly floor and such. Uh, but ba uh, basically, as Toy Barney said, um, if you're going to play a Diabolical Box, or basically if you're going to play Layton in general, uh, don't play it all in one sitting, uh, cause that, cause that, yeah, as Toy Barney said, like, you know, it'll definitely burn you out if you try to play it in one sitting. And, and again, <laughs> and again, uh, and again, when I did my walkthrough on this game and such, there were actually some points where I did feel a little burned out as well, too. Especially with, uh, Chapter 6 and such, and doing it, you know, 100%. So, I, I think another thing I will recommend... Felt, uh, I, I felt like I want, I, I felt, I felt like I was gonna die. I, I was like... Uh, let me put on. Let me put. Let me put on some pompous. I know. Cause I'm getting so. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but another advice I would also say to you guys is that, like, you know, um, if you guys are going to do a diabolical box, um, I would say don't. Uh, I would say don't go for a hundred percent just yet. Like, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't, if you're not going for a hundred percent, a diabolical box shouldn't be too bad for you guys. It's probably not the best in the uh, latent series. Honestly, I would say um, the first game and the third game are a little bit better. Um, in this game, but that's not to say this game is bad because like I said there are a lot of good things this game has like you know with the music and the settings and such I um, mean like I said, you know the puzzles themselves too are actually real fun in this game um, But so far it is definitely the weakest out of the latent series and such but um, but, uh, Mr. D weakest um, Maybe maybe not because like I said, there, I still got the uh, prequel trilogies to do so again Maybe there might be a game that might be even weaker than this one uh, but as it stands, um, I still like Diabolical Box for what it is. Um, it's not—it's probably not the best as the first lane game, but there's still some good things about this game that, you know, I still like to go back to this game, either playing it on my own or watching my own walkthrough from time to time. And I, and I do still enjoy this game when I do uh, when I do have a chance to play it. There's still some fun stuff about it that, you know, I don't mind coming back to this game. So my rating for this game, uh, after thinking about it long and hard, I'm going to go ahead and also give it like a 7 out of 10. It's not, it's not the best of the games, but at the same time, it's definitely not the worst either. There are still some things in this game that are memorable, with the ending, the story, the setting, and everything. So, uh, so basically, if you guys like the first professional lane game, definitely do try this game out and such. I think you guys will probably enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. Alrighty. But yeah, alright everyone, so we are done with Professor Lane and Diabolical Box. It took us about, uh, took us about six streams to, uh, finish this. But we finally finished it. So uh, now, uh, now Toy Bonnie, Justin, and I have discussed this. Uh, but we decided that you know um, it would be best if we took a real long break between this game and the next Professor Lane game that we'll be doing soon. Uh, the next Professor Lane game that we're going to be doing, in fact, is a little sneak peek on the uh, next uh, Professor Lane game that's coming up soon. But yeah, basic. But yeah, basically, uh, next. 
uh, yeah, next time when we uh, come back, we are going to be doing Professor Lane and the Unwound Future, a uh, fan favorite game among the uh, among the fans, and I, I I definitely like the game too. Definitely a lot better than Diabolical Box in terms of like you know the story. The story is is betterly structured and it has a really really sad ending too. So like I said to Toy Barney and Justin, like you know they almost cried in uh, Diabolical Box. No doubt they're probably almost going to cry in this game too, because like I said, the ending is really sad. Oh boy. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, um, so yeah, and another reason we're going to take a long break too is that uh, Toy Barney is going to be starting college soon, and uh, he wants to make sure he gets every he, he gets settled in college first. So once he gets settled in college, um, we're most likely going to be doing uh, Unwound Future at around September. We'll let you know what day in September, but yeah, we're going to be doing it in September, and our goal is to try to see if we can at least finish it before December starts. That's our goal. Yeah, because on December, um, for the ones that don't know, I was accepted into a uh, Santa tracking team, and I'm going to be busy on December preparing for the tracking on December 24th and all that stuff. Nice. But yeah, uh, but, uh, but yeah, but like I said, uh, Unwound Future definitely has a better um, story structure. So if we were to start in September and we had little to no um, gaps in between, I have no doubt we'll probably finish it somewhere around November. In, yeah. All right. I'm sure we will because... Because uh, um, I went to the college uh, a couple days ago, and I saw the schedule, and really, it isn't that bad. I hope the classes aren't that hard, though. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, like, uh, the only advice I will give to you as someone that has been in college is just, like, you know, uh, don't stretch yourself out, uh, don't stretch yourself out, uh, don't stress yourself out over too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, don't stretch yourself out uh, over too much. Um, basically, just try to do the work as best you can. Take all the time that you need. If you need breaks, definitely take the breaks whenever you need, and you should be just fine. All right, thank you, man. You're welcome. And uh, we should we should address this as well that um, now that we completed Layden, we're gonna uh, and you and you guys have been seeing this uh, throughout the stream, but we finally finished scripting the season seven review, and we're currently working on on yep. the actual review. I'm gonna be editing it, and I'm also gonna be doing the slides and literally everything. Yes, we have. Well, I, well, I, well, actually, uh, well, actually, by the time uh, by, uh, by the time this gets uploaded onto YouTube, we um, most likely the uh, season seven review will be up on our on our uh, on our co-op channel, Review Bros. So, so if you guys want to check it out, make sure you check out the uh, Review Bros. channel in the link in the description below. Yeah, but yeah. Anyways, so uh, all right. So this has been Sakura to Diesel saying thank you all so much for anyone that's joining that's been joining us on the Diabolical stream. It's been a little bit stressful, a little burned out for all of us, but at least we finished the game. So now all we gotta worry about is just one more Layton game, and then we're done with Layton for a long, long while. And that, uh, but I, and I will say the next stream that we will be doing will be uh, hopefully if everything goes well, we'll be doing an RPG stream um, sometime soon next year. And the uh, next marathon game that we'll be doing a year after that will be Ace Attorney. So, so basically, oh, yes. <laughs> so basically, when we get to Ace Attorney, we're gonna be doing all three Ace Attorney games as well as the uh, Ashwood spinoff games, the Ace Attorney Investigations. But yeah, if you guys are looking forward to that, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and everything, and uh, and just basically keep a good eye out for when those streams are happening. And if you guys have enjoyed the stream and such, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you guys want to see more, uh, any more of our uh, Let's Play series, or at least my Let's Play series, of whether it's like Pokemon, Ace Attorney, Mario, or whatever game I'm going to be doing sometime on this gaming channel, hit that subscribe button as well. Speaking of games, if you guys got any games you want me to try out, there's been the comments on YouTube or on my Facebook page. Uh, again, also check out um, uh, mine and Toy Barney's co-op channel um, if you guys want to see us do movie and TV shows together. Or if you want, or if you guys want to see uh, movie and TV show show uh, solo, make sure you check, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Also as gonna well. be, and we're also going to be doing animes in sometime in the future in that channel. Well, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we will soon. Yes, yeah, so like, uh, like I said, we'll be reviewing just about uh, anything we want to review together. <laughs> but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Sakura Diesel with my good friends. Uh, that's your buddy guy, and and <laughs> and we'll see you all next time. Uh, we'll see you all in the next stream again. We'll keep you guys updated on when, but uh, we'll see you all in the next Professor Lane stream sometime in September after Toy Barney gets settled. But like I said, um, I think Toy Barney and Justin will definitely love Unwound Future. It is definitely uh, it. Like I said, it's definitely my favorite. Uh, my favorite Lane game in terms of the story and such. And yeah, as I said Unwound Future. So yeah, this story is going to involve time travel. So, if you guys like... I will, I will say that uh, I hope the next game is a bit better, and uh, 
Yeah, hopefully we can kick this stupid game. Hopefully we can kick this stupid piece of shit game up his ass. And we can go into our um, future. Oh, we. Um, nah, nah, I was doing, uh, I was I, I doing, uh, what oh, no. was his name? The one in the, the uh, hotel? Uh, Kratz, or, ba or, or basically, we could just call him Kermit if you want. I, Kratz, I was just, Kratz, I, I, Kratz, I, I was yeah, just Kratz, Kratz, yeah, I, I was just basically going to say, oh, don't worry, Kermit the Frog, this game is a lot better. Anyways, yeah. so, so... So, before we go, um, I wanted to ask this a little question, so... Yes. So, uh, so there's no, so there's no, so there's a not, not another game after on one future. Like, there's no to be continued. Uh, there is, uh, 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 uh there is, uh, okay. So basically, after Unwound Future, there is the uh, prequel trilogies, um, in the uh, in the Professor Layton series. But I'm gonna do those myself first as walkthroughs. And once I get done with the uh, last uh, game in the prequel trilogy, then we're gonna be doing another Professor Layton marathon on those games. But uh, but when those, but when those time comes, I will. I will let you guys know and ask you guys if you want to join in on those games. Probably 2025, maybe. <laughs> possibly, or possibly even longer than that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, but yeah, uh, but yeah, okay. I think we rambled on for long enough. So take care, guys, and we'll see you all in the next stream. All right, take care, everybody. See you later, and check out our season seven review if you're watching this after it's posted. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye.